Oh, hey guys, uh, just casually gaming. With the purchase of a qualifying Intel processor, SSD, or NUC, you could instantly win an Intel gaming jersey and be entered in the draw for the ultimate system. Click now to learn more. The first and most important thing about this mouse is the optical sensor featuring Logitech's Delta Zero and Fusion Engine. I'll get into exactly what the Fusion Engine does in a moment, but first I want to test their Delta Zero feature, which basically means no cursor acceleration, as I have some pretty seriously deeply rooted trust issues when it comes to most manufacturers and their claims about acceleration. A quick and dirty explanation of mouse acceleration is this. If you disable it, moving your mouse from point A to B along a surface without acceleration should result in the cursor on your screen moving exactly relative to the movement of your mouse, independent of the speed of which the mouse is moving. If you were to start at A, move halfway to B extremely quickly, shake the mouse around for a little while and then go extremely slowly to B, it would still land on B. If you enable acceleration, moving extremely quickly the same distance on the mouse pad will cause your cursor to overshoot B's position on the screen. And then repeating the same movement but very slowly will cause the cursor to fall short of B's position. This is fine for average users who want to move their mouse very slowly when trying to click on something more precisely, but it's not desirable for gamers who want precision of their muscle movements to translate directly to the screen without any janky randomness. It seems like this is a non-issue, since aside from gaming mouse drivers, Windows allows pointer acceleration to be disabled except that many modern gaming mouse sensors have inherent acceleration that cannot be turned off. So to calm my anxiety, we tested G402 sensors by grabbing our camera slider and just doing a few modifications. I replaced the traditional soft stopper method with dual heavy duty clamps to reduce travel when the slider bumped into them. I then put the slider on the table and lowered it pretty much as far as it could go using a Velcro strip to secure the mouse to the bottom of the slider. Then for measurement, I put a grid overlay on my monitor. After all this setup, I tested it with a variety of movements, and I'm happy to say that as far as I can tell, the G402 features what is known as a perfect sensor, with no inherent acceleration. Kudos Logitech. Next up is the Fusion engine I was talking about earlier. Logitech is using a gyro and an accelerometer to augment their already awesome optical sensor. If you're running at a low DPI setting and need to whip your mouse insanely fast in order to pull that super sick 360 no scope at the end of your mega dope montage video, it is technically possible for you to outpace an optical sensor. If you do manage to outpace the optical sensor, it can potentially cause the cursor to judder or even drastically jump around, which is bad. With the Fusion Engine and the Gyrometer and Accelerometer, we'll try to fill the holes in the data stream to avoid this. To test this out, Linus and I had a contest of sorts where we battled to see who could whip the mouse the fastest in terms of IPS, or inches per second. Linus won to his extensive master badminton skills, which he has honed over many years of extremely vigorous training. So it works as advertised. Kudos again. But even though it worked, I left Logitech's sensor monitoring tool on for a night of gaming and just tried to ignore it and play normally to see what would happen. It seems that I never actually exceeded 84 IPS, which means this feature is unlikely to ever actually kick in for me. But I'm not a professional gamer. If you're a low sensitivity gamer and you do end up purchasing the G402 and you find that you get into the speeds where the Fusion Engine really benefits you, please message me on Twitter or some other medium as I'd love to hear more about your experience. Which brings us to the software. Setting the 240 to 4000 DPI sensors multiple sensitivity levels was easy enough and it allowed for fairly specific setting as it was able to increase in increments of 80. You can also set your polling rate to 125, 250, 500, or even 1000 reports per second. After getting all that technical stuff out of the way, you can have fun with the right side of your brain by playing with the customizable lighting. You're able to set brightness level, change the speed, or disable breathing mode entirely, and change the deep if DPI lighting is always on or just illuminated when you're changing things. And last but not least is turning off the lighting effects when you haven't used your mouse for a specific amount of time. Handy for those of us who have our computers in our rooms. So that was fun, but now it's time for real world use of impressions in terms of shape, feel, and ergonomics of the unit. When compared to the G502's futuristic alien looking aesthetic, the G402 is definitely more conservative, but still does have some flair. 
It's rocking eight buttons, including forward, back, DPI up, DPI down, DPI shift, left click, right click, and middle click, and they can be programmed to execute various functions, keystrokes, or even multi-key macros using Logitech's software. So basically, even if you're one of those guys who is religiously against DPI shift buttons, you can set that button to anything from play next song functionality to spamming kappa 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 or raise your dongers in chat. Unfortunately though, scroll up and scroll down were not included in the key binding options. After all that, we're left with a few takeaways. When compared to the G502, the G402 is definitely a bit more conservative. It's down to eight buttons from 11. It doesn't have a free spinning or tilting scroll wheel. It doesn't have a customizable weighting system. It lacks some of the nicely textured soft touch rubber gripping. The light isn't quite as bright. It doesn't have a braided cable. The swooped out part for your thumb isn't nearly as accommodating. And the left and right click don't feel quite as sharp and responsive as the G502, but they still have a 20 million click rating, which is nice. But hold on now, that's actually not that bad. On one hand, you have the G502 with its beautiful sensor and laundry list of features. On the other hand, you have the G402 with a different but still beautiful sensor, which is arm in arm with a powerful, but possibly not needed for everyone at least, Fusion engine. And while the G402's laundry list of features is considerably shorter than the G502, it still feels great in hand. I mean, you still have the fundamental ergonomic quality of a Logitech mouse, which to many people, myself included, feels great in your hand. And you've got one other thing in your hand that feels great too. 20 bucks. The G402 is $60 compared to the G502's $80 price tag. So that's a lot of most for your money, and the review is pretty much over. But I have one more closing thought. Thank you Logitech for working on meaningful performance metrics instead of just focusing on DPI, which many people are just gonna lower anyways. They don't even have their DPI blasted on the front of the box, and it's clear they're more focused on things like their Delta Zero and Fusion Engine technologies. I'm tired of seeing companies dump high-end, flawed mice year after year, and it's nice to see a shift in focus. Speaking of a shift in focus, today's video is sponsored by Gigabyte Aorus X7 V2 Gaming Notebook. This is the thin and light SLI gaming notebook that we compared against a not-so-thin and light notebook in the video in the annotation here. With two GeForce 860Ms in SLI, an Intel i7-4860HQ processor, a 17.3-inch 1080p display, a 1TB hard drive, and a few different options for SSD and RAM capacities, all packed in a chassis that's less than 0.8 inches tall, this is an absolute beast that you can pack in your backpack without breaking your back. It has a surprisingly good keyboard, solid heat dissipation from its rear exhaust setup, and more than acceptable noise levels for a thin notebook all which make the Gigabyte Aorus X7 V2 an ideal product for someone looking for a notebook that's suitable for everyday use as well as gaming. So if you're in the market for a gaming notebook, be sure to check out pricing and availability for the X7 V2 using the link in the video description. Let me know what you guys think about their Delta Zero and Fusion Core technologies, as long as what do you guys think about our testing methodologies for stuff like acceleration. Also, if you would like to save money getting the 402, or if you're more kind of into the baller style status of the G502. Let me know all that kind of stuff in the comments down below, where you should also be liking, disliking, subscribing, sharing, and otherwise distributing this video. And if you want to post somewhere else because you're kind of not into YouTube, jump over to the forum, post there, and let me know what you think there. If you don't like the ads on the forum, become a contributor. And as always, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.